Welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to be trying some photo paper to stamp a scene out. I've used this type of paper in the past with certain types of techniques that weren't really conducive for it. And I'm going to be doing that again here, <laughs> but I'll try to kind of adjust my technique a little bit. A lot of us have some photo paper in, I don't know, our supplies, stuff that we haven't used before. Uh, so it'd be a good thing, you know, if we we're able to come up with some good techniques for it. Photo paper has that emulsion coating on it, so kind of applying, you know, certain types of methodology with dye-based inks um, isn't the greatest, um, but you can kind of make do with it with certain types of applications, and we'll try to do that here. I'm not an expert by any means at um, using photo paper. I've just, I'm guessing I've done I don't think I've even done 10 scenes on it before. Um, but I do like it with alcohol inks, okay? Now, I'm making my impressions with just standard dye-based inks here, and they stamp out really nicely on photo paper. They, your inks apply, and they dry very quickly. That's the way um, that emulsion coating is designed to work um, for your inkjet printers. You don't want to have some sort of paper... Um, print out and then for you know a printout to take a long time to dry um, so that's the way these emulsion coatings are kind of designed they you know you you, know, you print it out and they dry very quickly so when it comes to something like dye based inks on this type of surface it it goes on very nicely and it dries very quickly so um, it's not a problem in terms of uh, I'm guessing whatever types of inks you want to use. I, I think solvent inks would work just fine. In terms of the impressions, just don't use an oil-based pigment ink on here. Um, I've tried that in the past, and it just didn't dry um, at all, you know, in the, in the form of like a versifying on photo paper. All right, stamping out my foreground imagery. I was a little bit concerned about these images that have a lot of surface area, a lot of solid, you know, blacks in these foreground um, pines and rocks imagery. Um, just because as you're holding the stamp down on photo paper, which someone in the live stream mentioned they've run into as well. Sometimes it almost feels like you're pulling off part of that paper because if you hold it down for too long, the ink is setting up very quickly. The paper is kind of grabbing that ink. And if you hold it down too long, it's almost like it creates a bond or like a seal where when you lift the stamp, it's, you know, it feels like it's really stuck to it. Um, uh, so you need to be kind of mindful of that uh, when uh, using this type of surface here. Different brands might be a little bit different. Um, I don't know. You know, there were Epson, Canon, uh, you know, probably like a Staples brand, Office Depot. I would guess all the chains had their own types of uh, photo paper for sale. Um, and uh, they might all be a little bit different. It might be different from glossy to matte to satin to... I don't know. I think most of the papers that I've worked with are glossy, though. Okay, so going for some background impressions here um, in the form of the Rocky Peaks. I'm kind of creating a setting for these loons that I wanted to use um, in a lake, to, uh, lake scenario. Here, so um, just kind of creating the background in there uh, with this type of paper too I'm thinking that I want to fill in as much as possible um, because I don't want a big open area which is kind of what I did here in the open lake area maybe I should have put a couple additional I don't know like more distant rocks or something like that in that middle of that lake but uh, I wasn't really quite sure where I wanted to stamp out that uh, the loon imagery. I ended up doing it the really lower section here, but I figured I could fill in here with um, a lot of impressions of this water pattern small stamp. Okay, now one of the things that kind of surprised me here, I'd say really surprised me, was that even though those impressions like the um, pines and rocks were not wet to the touch, but 
Um, when I went over those trees there with this, you know, wet application of the water pattern small image, it, it was dragging out some of that black ink that I had just stamped out. So while that black ink is reasonably dry, to the touch at least, what the thing that I wasn't anticipating, and like I said, I, I, I've done this paper before, but I haven't done it in a while, but you can see where that black is kind of dragging out with the um, water pattern. This emulsion coating on this photo paper really keeps or retains the media that you utilize on it very surface oriented where on cardstock um, the inks would work by staining the surface meaning they're kind of getting absorbed into the surface but on this photo paper it's just sitting right on the surface there which can be good or bad I mean in this case um, you can see where it's really dragging out like that and I didn't want that I'm, I mean, I'm able to work with it, and I was going to make this scene much darker anyway, so it wasn't really bothering me. But you do have to kind of um, make kind of mental note of that and adjust accordingly. So maybe instead of dragging that uh, water pattern small stamp, like I was a little bit. I mean, I'm not like fully like just dragging it along, but as I'm making the impression, I'm kind of just barely lifting it and uh, repeating it to get that um, texture down and then where you repeat it a lot it becomes almost tone it can, can become like a texturized tone like that okay so um, I'll adjust accordingly um, from here on okay so I have a lot of that um, water texture down there and where I didn't apply that water texture it becomes like lighting uh, within the scene. Now here I'm applying a Reinker Memento Summer Sky. It's a very light blue, so it was a good one to go on with. And as I'm kind of applying it, usually on cardstock, I'm kind of dragging my paper towel a little bit, kind of like in a sponging method. Uh, I would say similar to a, like a dry brush style of application. And that was really kind of dragging out some of that black ink again from the impression so you can see it it's kind of like a gray that I'm using so I'm adjusting here a little bit instead of kind of dragging my paper towel I'm doing more of a tapping motion going up and down okay and doing that minor change um, now I'm dragging again a little bit here maybe I didn't you know start the tapping until a little bit later but you can see where it's really kind of um, dragging out and physically mixing in that black ink impressions or the black ink impressions with this reinker fluid okay now like i said i plan to make this scene um kind of a darker i don't know maybe post twilight type of scene that's what i was thinking about it it ended up being lighter than that with my use of the white pigment ink at the end but that's what i was thinking here so i didn't mind the gray tones of the um, the mixture of inks okay so adding that in I don't know trying to figure out my touch here a little bit and adjusting accordingly okay so for some of those background areas um, I stamped those pine islands lighter than the foreground okay I was using a lot of grays um, some greens to make it a gray green uh, with my pens um, so I'm just using more of a tapping motion over the in those areas. I don't want to, you know, have a bunch of streaked um, background trees in there, okay? But I didn't mind some streaks going through my foreground trees because they were over a darker area in that water, okay? Okay, going on with some gray here. Um, that gray is really a similar value to the impressions in the background, okay? But now I'm starting to use more of a tapping motion with my paper towel. You can use a sponge or something like that or, a, I don't know, other types of ink applicators. I find the paper towel works um, really well 
because of the absorbent nature of paper towels. And if you can absorb media in whatever applicator you're using, the more media you have to transfer to the paper. If you have a type of applicator that's doing more of a wicking of your media, such as water-based inks, then you don't have as much to work with. Okay, I think this is the black that I'm using here. Uh, really developing the shadows. And I don't know, this, this paper here wasn't grabbing my ink quite as much, but it's probably because of the amount of, I guess, moist liquid on this, you know, kind of remaining on the surface of this emulsion coated uh, paper. What you'll find too um, from a tactile experience is that I find that when you're working with in this type of methodology on photo paper, the photo paper feels a little bit more tacky to me. I mean, it's not full on sticky or anything like that, but it just feels different than working on um, card stocks. But I, I don't know, I, I thought it looked pretty good here in terms of, uh, I don't know, just the color qualities that are down there. Um, things weren't going on quite as smoothly as I wanted, but again, I haven't worked with this type of paper in years, and this is like my first time that I've done it, and I had forgotten a lot of the, um, I don't know, the kind of considerations that, um, you know, you might have going into uh, the use of this type of paper here. Okay, but one of the things that I really like using on photo paper, again, are um, alcohol inks in the form of markers, and I'll be using those here coming up here very soon. And I ran into some surprises when using that. Um, that I don't know if I remember it happening, but uh, I don't remember the markers, um, these alcohol markers, uh, because alcohol and water don't really mix. Um, but I was surprised at the use of the markers. If you're using a light colored marker in the water down here or something like that, I thought, oh, I'm kind of removing some of that dye based ink. And, and it's a big, it's not really the alcohol that's putting the water based dyes back into solution, but you're just kind of wiping off that dye-based ink off of this emulsion coating. So those dye-based inks are really floating on this emulsion so that you can kind of remove them if you want to. So that's a pretty powerful ability to be able to do um, on any type of surface that you're working with. You can't really do that too much on like a card stocks because it's absorbing into the pulp of the paper but this is a very surface oriented style of application here okay going into these rocks right here um, rendering these rocks a little bit more with some color and i kind of go crazy a little bit because i don't know using alcohol markers on photo paper um, is really fun because you can add the alcohol inks and then you can physically go back in and mix them you can blend them together and again, it's because that alcohol is really sitting on the surface and it's not getting absorbed back into something like a cardstock. So you can add some in, make a rock, for example, dark, but then you can go back in with a lighter color and use it on the top of the rock so it looks like that rock is being top lit. And I, I like that ability to add light back into dark. That's why I'm always using things like white pigment inks and white gel pens or paint pens, stuff like that, lighter color gel pens back into darker areas. But with um, alcohol inks, you can really go back in and um, adjust your lighting accordingly. So you don't have to be um, very mindful, if at all, with your application of tones. So see that I'm going back in and adding a lighter top to those rocks. Uh, going back in and rendering some of those mountains a little bit. It kind of fleshes them out a little bit more when you do that. And I just do that with a really light gray. All right, so going back in, I added a little bit of a warm tone into that area. I added like a blue that really stood out there. But again, you can just go back and blend it out. 
Okay, adding a little bit of shadow work in here. One of the things that's really nice about this paper um, is that you can really get the gist of how that medium, whatever you're using, or whatever color you're using, is going to look like when it dries, because it doesn't really change very much, you know, from your immediate application of the media. With other types of papers, they kind of soak in and absorb, and they dry a little bit differently than what they look like when freshly applied. Dye-based inks tend to dry lighter looking. And pigment inks, if I'm using white pigment ink, it tends to dry darker looking because, because it comes more um, transparent in nature, okay? But um, I don't know, with photo paper you get, what you see is what you get for the most part. I mean, this piece, you know, when allowed to dry overnight, doesn't look any different than what it looked like when I was working on it, which is good. I mean, on card stocks you can adjust, you can add more color if you need to, um, you can add build up your white pigment ink, for example, a little bit more. Okay, now, because of all that alcohol ink laid down on that surface, I'm using a Stazon black for this really close foreground imagery um, used on this scene. I wasn't quite sure if dye-based inks were going to apply very well over the top of those alcohol inks, so Stazon pretty much works on anything, so... Um, that was a pretty safe bet for these foreground leaves here. So just adding something a lot closer. You can't really see it too much in this video here because black over kind of black leaves over a dark shadow, you know, you don't see it too much. Now I've never tried embossing on photo paper either. I would be a little bit worried about that because of that coating on there. I think it would really make the surface of this photo paper bow and possibly warp. I, I'm not sure. I'll have to try it sometime. But that's what I speculate. Okay, so there's all the imagery stamped on there. It almost looks more satiny. Maybe that's the... There used to be like these extra glossy or extra shiny um, types of surfaces with um, photo paper. Um, and then there were like I said, matte and satin. I think I have some satin, but this one almost looks more satiny, doesn't it, than like a really strong gloss. Okay, that was some of the tiny rock stamp. I wanted to get a little bit of extra texture in that water. Okay, I'm kind of just kind of pointing out some strategies of using the white pigment ink. Um, in this scenario here. The white pigment ink should give a lot of body to this scene. Um, it gives a lot of extra body in terms of creating depth, extra texturing in terms of like soft lighting, um, so on and so forth. Okay, now I, I, I'm applying this ink in a very dry brush style of application. It gets a little bit too dry here, so I do go and re-ink my um, pad coming up here pretty soon. But let's see, let's fast forward a little bit here. Okay, I have re-inked my white pad there, and uh, so we're going to get a much faster application of this media. It was just a little bit too dry. Okay, so see that? I'm adding some into the background there where those lighter um, areas were at the base of the mountains. But going into some of those trees, it really creates a lot of um, depth and uh, kind of textural variation. You have these images that are partly crisp and partly soft. Adding some of this into the foreground here, into that lighter area. I don't really add the white pigment ink into the too much of the darker areas, like the shaded areas, um, because I'm, you know, there wouldn't be too much lighting in a very dark area. I mean, you can add it in certain areas, but just be a little bit more delicate with your application of it. 
All right, trying to zoom in here. My camera's been having a hard time kind of focusing in on um, close-ups for some reason of late. Okay, kind of adding some of this into the, the loon imagery, making some of those loons look like they're kind of swimming through a little bit of mist. And like I said, from a textural kind of variation standpoint, um, this white pigment ink is really fun to add into a, a scene. Adding some of it over the mountain kind of pushes the mountain back into the distance from a visual standpoint even more. Illusionistic standpoint, I guess. Visual illusion. Kind of describing to people that area right in the middle there where I've put some of that pigment ink over the left side of that pine island pushes it back um, from that other impression of the same image. So it looks like there's a little bit of a gap between those two um, islands representing, you know, that water probably goes around that other one in the foreground there. So it just creates a little bit of um, distance um, or a lot of distance between, I don't know, those background images. And I, I don't know, I like a lot of texture in my pieces. I like crisp, contrasting with um, soft. I like dark, contrasting with light. Um, and that white pigment ink does a, a lot for that. Okay, so uh, speaking of texture, I'm going to go in with this Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White and do a little dusting of a, I don't know what it would represent, it could represent like a first snowfall type of thing or something like that. I don't know. I just think it looks interesting to have a little bit more of this. Oh, I don't know. Textural contrast in here. I'm not going to splatter like an extreme amount of this, but just getting a little bit of that texture in there really um, adds to the variety of the scene. You can do, even do this on daytime scenes or something like that in... I don't know, spring, fall, or something like that. It would just represent, I don't know, whatever, pollen in the air or something like that. Uh, it just makes for a nice textural um, element within the scene. It, all, it also kind of represents lighting, too, because it's light over dark in many areas. I don't know, it just really adds quite a bit to it. And it can be in a very subtle way because of the... Um, size of these little splash marks. Okay, little paint pen detailing here with a 0.7 millimeter extra fine acrylic paint pen. You can use a gel pen or something like that if you have that. Now one of the things that occurred to me when doing this that's different than cardstock, I can go over um, my white pigment applications of ink on cardstock because the pigment ink on cardstock kind of grabs the paper a little bit more. But again, going back to that very surface oriented application of media on this photo paper, I was finding that um, my paint pen kept getting clogged because that white pigment ink is still, it's like anything that was applied is all on the surface so I don't know I kept having to kind of um, clear out my uh, white pen during this entire process here um, I don't know it's just something to take into consideration when doing that see I wasn't getting a very um, thick dot here because of all that pigment ink that was underneath where I'm trying to apply some of these um, kind of reflected little I don't know what are points of light in here. I mean, it worked okay, but um, you just have to keep get you know keep getting your uh, pen to flow, you know, because you, you get a little bit of that into the tip of the pen, and it kind of clogs it up. It kind of dries very quickly for you. All right, so um, adding some of this um, little highlights into my trees. Like I said, just get your pen kind of flowing 
um, off of your scene a little bit. Do a little scribble and that pretty much clears it up. Okay, so adding some of this lighting and highlights onto these foreground trees. I like how, I don't know, some of these looks here kind of give that white pigment ink and I don't know, maybe maybe it's the photo paper here. Um, it kind of makes the, the piece look a little bit more painted looking, I guess. I guess it's because uh, of that alcohol ink too, kind of dragging off some of the um, dye-based inks off of the surface there in that water. Um, it kind of has a little bit of a kind of an oil painted feel to it. I, I, I didn't really think about that when I was working on it, but now that I'm watching this again, um, I don't know, that occurs to me. Adding in a little bit more of this white pigment ink, after I added in some of those highlights, I thought, okay, it looks a little bit too busy, so um, going back into it with the uh, white pigment ink here. Okay, there's the scene. Uh, my first test on photo paper in quite some time, so I'll be doing some um, further tests going forward. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.